Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. And I say that every time. It means that which is multidimensional. For still misunderstood on this planet is magnetics. Not understood is one term, misunderstood is another. For it is a quantum attribute of your reality. One of the few that spills over into your life on an everyday way. And I am in service in a quantum way to you. Relax for a moment. A message that's never been given in this fashion before is about to be given. I want my partner to go slow. The message is multifaceted and it's one of power. It's one of history. And there are many things to read into this, even beyond the words that will be spoken this day. I speak to an audience that is larger than that which is in the room. For there are many who are listening now and reading. I know the potential of the eyes on the page, the ears that are here. And although there may be a hundred or so of you here, there's thousands who will listen. To me, they are listening now. To me, they are reading now. I call the message this day the end of history. And it's not a message of doom. Take it in a linear fashion or take it in a quantum fashion. If you take the title in a linear fashion, you might be frightened. It sounds like the end of time. If you take the title in a quantum fashion, we are saying it is the end of historic energy. There's a shift happening on the planet. We're going to come back to that statement in the end. And for me to do this correctly and appropriately, I may offend some because of the history energy that is inbred in some of you who have been taught a certain way. And I ask you to be patient with this, my message, to become unified with me as I give it. For I want to take you back and explain some things to you. To paint a picture, moving around in historic times, I want to go back to Abraham. The father of monotheism, Abraham, is where we like to actually look at the history of what you would say modern spiritual belief. For it is the way the world thinks. Oh, there were many before him. Some of you are Lemurian and you know. But Abraham represents to the earth the beginning of what you would call the major religions on the planet. And I want to give you the history of what happened. And I want you to look at it carefully. I want to honor Abraham, born in Ur, which is now part of modern Iraq. And I want to honor his sons not all born of Sarah. 
And the one I wish to speak of is Ishmael. Abraham is Jewish. <laughs> Great Jewish prophet. Ishmael is his son. There is no way that you could say Ishmael was not Jewish. For he is. Even to this day. Ishmael was born in Hebron. Very Israeli. <laughs> Ishmael is a Jew. He fell from favor even with the Jewish people early on. And Ishmael became that which is the ancestor of all Arabs, seen as such. And if he was Jewish, so were his ancestors. And so you have the Arabs with Jewish blood, that of Abraham flowing through them. But early on, they cast him out. And so although you had the one God and the monotheism and you had the principle of the love of God and the unity of God, there was a split. The truth was mixed with untruth. And even to this day, there would be a billion human beings who would say it was Ishmael, not Isaac, who was almost sacrificed at the Temple Mount. Mm. And what is the truth there? Maybe it's a metaphor for both. Human beings are not built to unify. In an old energy on the planet of those days and even the days that you were born in, the energy laid upon you to separate, not unify. And that is why they call it the old energy. Oh, they were wise men and women who knew better. But it is the old energy that separates and divides. Let me tell you about Muhammad. Muhammad, the prophet. Muhammad, who is of the lineage of Ishmael, who is of the lineage of Abraham. Muhammad was a Jew. Hmm. And that was his lineage, but not necessarily his culture. But remember the lineage. Muhammad had a beautiful, beautiful meeting. More than one. With an angelic presence. The angels talked to humanity. But how many of you have put together that most of the angels that ever talked to a human being talked to Jews? <laughs> like Mohammed, like Moses, like Jesus, like Abraham. Well, this was part of the setup of history. Part of what makes the Jewish lineage more important. And we have spoken of before, as go the Jews, go earth. There is something there to look at, and it is going to change. And Muhammad's information from the angel was this. Unify the Arabs and give them the God of Israel. And he did. And he did. And the information he had was beautiful. Written down after he was gone about the love of God. Muhammad the prophet was a unifier, not a separatist. And then there was Jesus. Long before Muhammad, Jesus the Jew, responsible for what you would call Christianity today, 
All of his disciples were Jewish. The rock, Peter, who started the church, was Jewish. And we tell you these things to show you there is a unity here. Perhaps there is a reason, dear ones, why the 12 layers of DNA have Hebrew names. It's an honor of the masters and the lineage, including that of Muhammad, of Ishmael, of Isaac, of Abraham, and of Jesus. All of them. The original spiritual language, oh, you might say, well, there was Sumerian, there was Lemurian. No, we're speaking of a language of today spoken today which is of a pure lineage of the masters who walked the planet and what did they do with it all of the information from all of these masters so different was the information culturally specific was the information and what did they do they went to war because humans separate things they don't put them together and there is the one God, the one creator inside looking at humanity going to war with each other over ideology about whose God is best when there's only one. And that's ancient history. And it's thousands of years old. Now it would occur to some to say it is human nature Therefore, this is what happens with humans. And it will repeat itself over and over. And that is the energy of history. Bathed it is in the soup of human nature, which some say never changes. And it will happen yet again and again and again. And I'm here to tell you, dear ones, that it isn't because something is happening on this planet that will end history it's going to end the energy of history in this earth today those who were born in Israel are taught from birth how to dislike and distrust all those around them at this time in history on this earth, those around them from birth are taught how to hate the Jews. Carefully taught. And in this they are proud because it is the lineage of their ancestors and they want to follow historic protocol. They want to stay separate. And I want to tell you that that's changing. Oh, it's changing. <laughs> it's changing in the places you don't expect. It's changing in Jerusalem. It's changing in Iran. And the children are waking up and saying, tell me again why I should hate them. They did what? When? And that wasn't them. That was their ancestors. Tell me again? Because I don't feel it. That's what they're saying. And their parents are shaking their heads. And they're saying, do as we say. And the children are saying, no. I am not going to and neither are those around me. And it's making a difference on this planet. And it is not being recorded. It is not being reported. Your media has no idea what to do with it. And it doesn't seem to even be news to them. And yet, it is one of the greatest energies this planet is seeing. And I'm here to tell you it's real and it's happening under the hood, you might say. Oh, there are other things I'd like to report to you. Let's talk about Europe. Eastern and Western Europe. Look at the history. I want you to look at history. 
What do you know about them? What were you taught about them, American? You had to learn all those dates and numbers. You sit in a country that's barely 200 years old and you had to memorize all the battles and all those conquerors and all those armies. The 1400s, 1300s, all the way to the present day, they conquered each other on a regular basis. <laughs> they warred with each other. When they got tired of that, they conquered other continents. The small country of Spain responsible for conquering South America, Middle America, North America, millions today are speaking their language. They never did before they arrived. Armies of Napoleon spreading across that part of Europe, so much of it conquering everything in his path. There are some cities, even today in Europe, that still don't know which country they belong to because the borders kept changing so much. <laughs> That's history. I want you to look at it carefully. And there would be those who say, this is what men do. They create borders and cultures and they go to war. Fifty years ago, Fifty years ago, the energy started to arrive. Oh, the alignments go slow, dear human being, but it was here. It was starting. It was beginning. You start to look at some of those who founded some of the institutions that you have today, who are clear thinkers. Some of them are not even here. Fifty years ago is when it began, really. A little more than that. Fifty years ago, something happened in Europe and you didn't hear much about it. Some very clear thinkers got together after World War II and said, if we don't do something different and out of the box of thinking, it's all going to happen again. Because this is what we do. Even the young country called America was involved. America almost split themselves before that, because that's what men do. And so they formed an idea. And let me tell you what it was. What if we got all the countries who wanted to, in mostly Western Europe and perhaps some Eastern parts, to agree to become a collection of country states. And if we start this now and go at it slowly, we could eventually have a system where the borders come down and there's no checkpoints and no passports. And they would all trade evenly together and for that to happen we may have even a common currency. It may be like the European United States. And they were laughed at. And they were put down by so many who said, no, 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 that's not what we do. We have too many different cultures. There's, there's some with strong currencies. There's some with weak currencies. Uh, there's too many objections. Imagine going from one country to another without being inspected at the border. I mean, who are you? to suggest something of this nature and they said we are unifiers and we think it's a good idea 50 years ago and today you have the European Union of States more all the time and the borders are gone and the checkpoints are missing and their currency called the euro is the strongest currency on earth stronger than yours. Now let me tell you what did that. It's a consciousness shift that even 50 years ago was here that through these two generations slowly allowed for free thinkers 
to unify things that had never been unified before. And let me tell you something, they'll never conquer each other again. Because history ended at that moment. In the Eastern Bloc, where there is still to this day very little unity, if you interview the consciousness of those, they will say, history will again repeat itself. We are victims of it. It's only a matter of time. They don't feel it. Because there's very little unity. Yet. But they will. There are some others who are starting to feel not a unity between countries, but a unity of spirituality, even in their own culture that they were never allowed to have before. A free thinking. It's new. There are those who are standing on, on podiums and in pulpits and they are saying, history is ended. It's the end of suffering. It's the end of dictatorships. It's the end of those who would put us in a low place. Instead, it's the beginning of capturing who we are. And although they don't say it in the words that we would say it, they are discovering the Creator inside, that which is the unity of God. And who would have thought this would have happened? The United States is what it is because 200 years ago the founders said let us make a group of state countries without physical borders in a system that's never been tried. It's one of unity and it had its tests and the unifiers won. And it is why this country is what it is and is seen and respected for what it is and what it's done. So young it is, but in the new energy it is. Declaration of Independence was channeled. Did you know that? Go read it. And feel that which is sacred inside, for it unifies and does not separate. In this day, and my partner was there to see it, that which is South America is starting to be unified. I would like to paint history for you there. There was a time when every single country had a dictator. Less than 10 years ago, they had failing economies and currencies that were worthless. trouble and strife and killings and now they don't the whole continent there's only one dictator left what's happening there is a move afoot that you're not going to hear about yet and they're talking about it right now and let me tell you what they're saying what would happen if we took these countries and eliminated the borders. <laughs> They're talking about it. In back rooms where nobody is reporting it. And they're saying, what about a plan of eventually having one currency from the top of Colombia to the bottom of Chile? And we would be strong and unified. And I will tell you, dear one, it's going to work. Let me tell you where else it's happening in that which is the beginning of the unity of the African states and they don't even have states yet and they will because when that continent is healed and there is no AIDS and there is no disease they're going to want what you have they're going to want houses and schools and economy they're going to want to drive to work in peace and there is so much land there and the population is so ready there. It'll be one of the strongest economies on the planet within two generations. <laughs> and it's going to happen because of a unifying idea. 
put together. Don't pull apart. In this place you call America, there are 350 kinds of Christianity today. One Savior. A lot of different ideas. What he said, what he meant. And every single one of them seems to branch off and create a church. And their history hasn't been all of that marvelous either. <laughs> and Peter the Rock would turn in his grave. If he knew, the time when Christians visited the villages and burned them and raped and pillaged because the village didn't believe in Christ. Hmm. They called it the Spanish Inquisition. They were terrorists. You should hear this, dear ones, and I don't mean to stir your emotions, but I will say before you label anyone a terrorist and before you call their religion something that is evil, you should take a look at history. Christians did it first or were the, the Jews <laughs> humanity does this it separates it goes to war it puts boxes together when the creative energy is one energy and I'm here to tell you in this discourse that history is ending <laughs> because that parameter of human nature is beginning to shift and the children know it and they're starting to see it put it together unified and now I give you something nobody's thinking about what do you think the internet is all about hmm? where all the countries on earth can talk to one another and the young people can see themselves talk to themselves, express opinions, no matter what the country does, they're doing it. And they are putting together a network of consciousness, of oneness. It's here to stay. It's part of the new energy. And the young people know it. And then there's the new age. <laughs> Let me tell you something that happened 20 years ago. It's something I had to get my partner through. There were those in one of your states who labeled Cryon as the evil of the century. My partner was cast out. There was an energy that wanted to stop him before he went to the United Nations for the first of seven times. He was, the third, he was in his third year of channeling. There were hundreds involved. And I had to get him through it. Where he was on his knees asking me, why? And I told him, that's what humans do. And I told him they wouldn't always do it. And there would come a time when that was not in the consciousness of humanity. If an Arab and a Jew can look at one another and see the Akashic lineage and see the one family with differences that don't require they kill one another, it can happen anywhere. And it's happening now. And all of humanity, no matter what the spiritual belief has been, guilty of falling into the historic trap of separating instead of unifying. And it's starting to be different. I want to take you back to Solomon. Very wise king. Very famous story. When the two mothers claimed the same child. And they both pleaded with Solomon to give them the baby. 
It landed at the king's lap to solve. And the wise man who knew the outcome before he made the statement ordered the child cut in half. And half the child would be given to each mother. <laughs> and he knew what would happen, and it did. One mother immediately turned white and said, Give the other woman the child. And he knew who the child belonged to instantly. It was her. And how did he know? Because compassion was the wisest thing on the planet. And that says it all. It is the compassion of the wise, divine, feminine mother that is sweeping this earth as literally the kundalini moves from one continent to another as the earth is feeling the shift and some are feeling desperately alone in the process not understanding if that's what it must feel like with a computer when you turn it off and reboot it it is the same here with human consciousness as it reboots itself into another paradigm where history is not going to control what happens next And that's what you're feeling. And Solomon knew it. The compassion of the 33. That number which means compassion in numerology. A master number which sits upon the planet. Which some call the Christed energy. The master of love. Not the savior for Christians. <laughs> Jesus the Jew aligning with Mohammed of Jewish lineage Ishmael son of Abraham you can see it it is there it's odd perhaps that the Jews will be the last ones online <laughs> they set it up for this and I'll tell you why the setup is so grand and so great because when they finally unify with themselves and with their neighbors, you will know it's a miracle. And they will too. All of them, each of them will look around. Just like the Russians did when the Soviet Union fell over all by itself without a shot, without a war because it no longer suited the magnificence of those that lived there. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see the same thing. When, Brian? <laughs> when it's ready. When the synchronicity is afoot. And you've got time. The energy of 2012 has been with you for 16 years as I sit here and will be with you. 20 more. That is how the alignment works as it moves literally through the center of the galaxy equator. As the precession of the equinoxes takes its effect and you move into the station, as we say, as the train arrives, as my partner has put it so slowly, it's a 36 year window of experience, not a crosshair on December 21st. You are living in this and you have been New Ager. Now there are those in here who I speak to in the room and I want to talk to them now. Not the listener, not the reader. I want to talk to the room. I want to talk to those who sit in this energy. I want you to go away differently than you came today. I want you to go away with an activation of that which is angelic. That which is creator energy inside that is going to give you wisdom within your spiritual belief. Because not all of you here believe as the channeler does. And it doesn't matter. And so here is your test. Can you look at those here as family even if you don't agree with them? Can you love them? 
You have a choice to leave this place and say, well, I'm not going to go to a meeting like that again. They're crazy. Or you can say, I'm not going to go to a meeting like that again because I don't necessarily agree with them, but I love them. And they're welcome in my house. And if they want to come to dinner, it's okay. And I can joke with them and be with them and shake their hands. Might even marry one of them. <laughs> because I recognize that there is one God and there is one creator and we both have it inside of us. And so our ideas, differences don't separate us anymore. They can be there like the countries that exist next to each other without borders. The cultures are still there. They still exist. They're still their own country. But now they're together. And they're never going to war with each other again, ever. They can't. <laughs> they got one currency. <laughs> Unification does that. Solemn knew it. The secret is compassion. Dear ones, leave this place compassionate for one another. You get home and you turn on the television and you see someone you don't like because they're politically not of your party. Here is your challenge for the day. Can you love them? <laughs> Can you see the creator inside? Anyway, can you see them playing out a game of how things will settle in this country so that you're forced to work together <laughs> in unity? Hmm? Did any of you see that? Forced to work together, forced to compromise, forced to unify and not separate. When you see it in politics, you'll know it's real. Hmm? And that's what we're telling you. Look for it. It's there. Old energy leaves slowly. But there'll come a day when the old energy is not there anymore. And it may take a generation. And some of you say, I won't be here then. And I tell you, oh, yes, you will. Because <laughs> you're not going to miss the finale. You're not going to miss the finale. And I'm not going to be able to hold you back. And there will be a turnaround time for you which is faster than anything in history because history doesn't matter, even spiritual history. You're going to arrive and leave quick. We can't keep you home anymore. You always come back to earth, <laughs> old soul. And that's why we love you the way we do, old soul. I want to wash your feet now for what you're doing with the planet, old soul. Take the opportunity to love someone, to see them quantumly, to see them as many, not one, to see their lineage of the planet to see them as important like you. And that is the message for this day. That you would unify that which is your soul with that which is other souls. And I'm going to ask you something now. In this room, at this time, I'm going to end the channel, but I don't want the energy to change. You sit in a grand place that was built for spiritual thinking in the sanctuary of this church. There have been healings, epiphanies, the very wood that is around you has seen it. The elements in the room know it. It is a room that never had to be warmed up when you walked in and some of you felt it. So here is what we ask. Let us not change this energy. And when the congregation shows up tomorrow morning, which is Sunday, 
let them feel what you have left here in this room. Family, you don't know them and they don't know you, but you do. Can you unify with them in a Unitarian way? <laughs> Can you unify with them? When I say the words, and so it is, hold the energy, leave at your own pace, stay seated if you wish for a little while, leave in quietness, take your socialization outside. Let this place remain a sanctuary until you return tomorrow. And so there is no applause, there is no noise, only unity, only the love for one another, only quantum thinking about what is before this planet, if you wish it, dear one. Do you feel different about the puzzles before you now? I hope you do. Solvable, every single one. Every single one. <laughs> and so it is. <laughs>